Hi everyone, welcome to this GCC Higher Revision video. It's 50 days to go into GCC Maths exam, so we're halfway there. If you've been watching from the beginning, you've gone through half of the videos, well done. And today we're going to be focusing on the topic of the cosine rule. Can't believe I'm not doing fractions, <laughs> but today we're doing the cosine rule. I really like this topic, so whenever you've got a triangle, um, and it doesn't have to be a right angle triangle, so it could be a triangle such as these ones on the revision card. If you want to find the length of one of the sides, so if you've got an angle and you've got the two sides either side of it, you can do the cosine rule to find the length of the third side. So if you've got an angle enclosed between two sides and you know the size of the angle on the two sides, you can use the cosine rule to find the length of the other side. Also, you can use the cosine rule if you've got a triangle and you know the length of all three sides to find the size of one of the angles as well. So that's when the cosine rule is useful. Hopefully in this video, I'm going to go through what the cosine rule is, how to do some questions on it, give you a chance to do some yourself, and then point out where the practice questions are. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at the cosine rule. So we've looked previously at the sine rule. So today we're going to be looking at the cosine rule. And the cosine rule is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. So if we've got a triangle and we've got the length of two sides, so for instance, if we had the lengths of B and C and we've got the size of the angle in between them, enclosed in between them, angle A, we can use the cosine rule to work out the length of this side, the side opposite the angle. So we can work out the length of side A here. So if you've got two sides and the angle between them, you can work out the length of the third side. And the cosine rule is really useful for doing that. And here's the cosine rule. Now it's given to you, so you don't need to learn it off by heart. But if you're doing A-level maths, you might end up learning it anyway. So here we've got a triangle and we're going to use the cosine rule to work out the length of of this side x. So if I was to use the cosine rule, I'd write down we've got a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. So the length of the side that we want, so in this case it's x, so x squared would be equal to, now it's these two sides squared and added together, so it'd be 20 squared plus 14 squared. And then we've got minus 2bc cos a. So it's going to be 2 multiplied by 20 multiplied by 14 multiplied by the cos of the angle in between them. Now I like to put this bit in a bracket. So I'm going to do minus and then in brackets 2 multiplied by b, which is equal to 20. Multiplied by c, the other side, which is 14. Multiplied by the cos of the angles. That's going to be the cos of 120. So multiply by the cos of 120. And then close brackets. This is a calculator question. So I'm going to type this into my calculator and see what we get. So we're going to get x squared equals... And whenever I type this into my calculator, I get 876. So we've got that this side squared is 876. Now we just need the square root to find the size of x. So x would be equal to the square root of 876, which is equal to 29.59729717 and so on. And that's in centimeters, so centimeters. And let's just round that. Let's round it to one decimal place. So that would be 29.6 centimeters to one decimal place. And that's it. So the cosine rule is really useful whenever you've got a triangle and you've got the length of two sides and the angle in between them to find the length of the third side. So here's a question now for you to try yourself. So here's a triangle. We've got the length of two sides, six centimeters and seven centimeters. We've got the sides of the angle in between them, which is 19 degrees. And can you use the cosine rule to work out the length of the third side? So feel free to press pause now to do that. Okay, so the cosine rule is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a, so 2bc cos a. So what that's saying is that this side squared, the side we're trying to find squared, so x squared, will be equal to the other two sides squared and added together. So that's going to be 6 squared plus 7 squared, and then minus 2bc cos a. Now I like to put that in brackets, so 2 multiplied by b, which is 6, multiplied by c, which is 7, multiplied by the cos of the angle in between them, so multiply by the cos of 19, close brackets. And then we're just going to type this into our calculator and get x squared equals 5.5764365. So that's that side squared, so we want to work out the square root of this, so x would be equal to the square root of 5.5764365. And when we work that in our calculator, we get that's equal to 2.36144863. And let's just run that to two decimal places. So that'll be 2.36 centimeters to two decimal places. And that's it. And that's the length of that side. And if you got that, well done. So as we've just seen, the cosine rule is really useful whenever you've got a triangle and you've got the length of two sides and the angle in between them to find the length of the third side. But what's also fantastic is that if you've got a triangle and you've got the length of the three sides, you can work out the size of one of the angles. So that's fantastic. So that if you've got the length of the sides or three sides, you can use the cosine rule to work out the size of the angles. So let's have a look at a question now. So here's a triangle and we've got the lengths of all three sides, eight meters, five meters, and seven meters. And we want to find the size of this angle, Vita. So let's write down the 
cosine rule. The cosine rule is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. So 2bc cos a. Now in this question we want to work out the size of the angle. So this is going to be our angle, so that's going to be a. And that means that this side here will be little a. And our b and our c can be either one of these two sides. So it doesn't actually matter which way around the b and the c are here. But the little a has to be opposite the capital A of the angle. So let's substitute those into the cosine rule and work out the size of the angle. So we've got a squared, so that's going to be 7 squared is equal to b squared, so that's going to be 8 squared, plus c squared, that's going to be 5 squared, minus, and then we've got 2bc cos a, so it's going to be 2. So it's going to be 2 multiplied by b, which is 8, multiplied by c, which is 5, multiplied by the cos of the angle, so cos vita in this case, because a is vita, the angle. So now we want to work out what vita is, so we want to get the vita on its own. So let's work out what some of this is. So 7 squared, that's going to be 49. Then we've got 8 squared plus 5 squared, well, 8 squared plus 5 squared would be equal to 89, so that's equal to 89, minus, and then we've got 2 times 8 times 5 times the cos of vita. So 2 times 8 times 5, well, 2 times 5 is 10, times 8 would be 80, and then times by cos vita would be 80 cos vita. So just multiplying the numbers in the front together, and that's still multiplied by cos vita. So we've got 49 equals 89, subtract 80 cos vita. Now we want to work out what cos vita is, so we want to solve this. So what we're going to do to begin with is I'm going to take away 89 from both sides of this equation. So I'm going to take away 89 from the left-hand side, and I'm going to take away 89 from the right-hand side. Because I want to get the cos vita on its own, so I want to get rid of this 89 here to begin with. 49, take away 89, that's going to be minus 40, will be equal to. And on the right-hand side, we had 89 subtract 89, we had 0. And then we've still got our minus 80 cos vita, so minus 80 cos vita. So we've got 40 equals minus 80 cos vita. Now at this point, there's a few different approaches we could use here at this point. We want to get the cos vita on its own. So one approach is here is we're multiplying cos vita by minus 80. So we could divide both sides by minus 80. And you get minus 40 divided by minus 80. And that would be equal to 0 0.5 or a half. And that's equal to cos vita. So that's one approach we could use at this point. Another approach we could use at this point is because you've got minus 40 equals minus 80 cos vita, you could change the signs. So you can multiply everything here by minus 1. And that gives you 40 equals 80 cos vita and then you could divide by 80 and you get again a half equals cos vita and so on so i'm going to use actually that approach i'm going to change the signs to begin with and do 40 equals 80 cos vita that's just what we get if we multiply everything here by minus one so if you multiply minus 40 by minus one you get 40 and if you've got minus 80 cos vita and you multiply that by minus one you get 80 cos vita so just changing the signs and now at this point we don't want this multiplied by 80 so we're going to divide by 80 and divide by 80 so we're going to get 40 divided by 80 equals cos vita. And 40 divided by 80 is equal to half, so we get cos vita is equal to half. And if cos vita is equal to half, well we can do the inverse cos of that to get what vita is. So vita would be either equal so vita would be equal to the inverse cos of a half. And the inverse cos of a half is equal to 60 degrees. That means that vita is equal to 60 degrees. And that's it. And in this bit actually I didn't use my calculator because I know the cos of 60 is equal to a half, but you can check it inverse cos of 0.5 or a half is equal to 60 degrees. So this angle is 60 degrees. So that's it. So the cosine rule can also be used to find the size of one of the angles if you know the lengths of all three sides. Okay, so here's one for you to try now yourself. Here we've got a triangle. We've got 22 centimeters, 20 centimeters, and 29 centimeters. Can you use the cosine rule to work out the size of this angle vita? Okay, so let's write down the cosine rule. a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. Okay, so let's consider our sides. This is the angle we're trying to find, so this would be capital A. The side opposite it will be little a, so this side here, the 29 has to be little a. And the b and the c, well, it doesn't actually matter which way around they go, so I'm going to call this one b and this one c. So let's substitute these values into the cosine rule. So a squared would be 29 squared equals b squared, so that's going to be 22 squared plus c squared, that's going to be 20 squared, minus 2bc, well that's going to be 2, multiplied by b, which is 22, multiplied by c, which is 20, multiplied by the cos of the angle, so that's going to be, in this case, cos vita. Okay, let's work this out. 29 squared, well 29 squared would be equal to 841, and that's equal to 22 squared, which is equal to 484, plus 20 squared, that's equal to 400, minus, and then we've got 2 times 22 times 20, that's equal to 880 cos vita. Okay, so we've worked that out so far. Let's uh, simplify this. So we're going to get 841 equals 484 plus 400 would be 884. And then we've still got our minus 880 lots of cos vita, just adding together these two.
Now we want to find our cos theta, so let's subtract 884 from both sides. So let's subtract 884 from the left-hand side and subtract 884 from the right-hand side. So on the left-hand side, 841, take away 884 is equal to minus 43. And the right-hand side, we're taking away the 884 to get rid of this 884. So we'll be left with minus 880 lots of cos theta. Now at this point, both of these are negative, so we can change the signs. We can multiply both of these by negative 1. So that would give us 43 equals 880 cos vita. Now we want to find out what cos vita is, so let's now divide both sides of this equation by 880. So let's divide by 880 and divide by 880. So on the left-hand side, we'd have 43 divided by 880. On the right-hand side, we'd just get cos vita. And at this point, we want to work out what vita is, so we're going to do the inverse cos. We're going to do the inverse cos of 43 over 880. And that's equal to the inverse cos of 43 over 880 is equal to 87.199 degrees, the three decimal places. And that's it. So the size of this angle will be 87.199 degrees, the three decimal places. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our last question. Okay, let's have a look at our last question. So our last question, we've got this quadrilateral. We've got this quadrilateral A, B, C, D. And we've been asked to find the size of the angle B, C, D. So we've been asked to find the size of this angle here. So feel free to press pause now and work out the size of that angle. Okay, so looking at this quadrilateral, automatically you think it's a quadrilateral, it's not a triangle, how can we use the cosine rule? But actually, if we divide it, if we split it into two triangles, so if we cut it diagonally, put in the line BD, you can see here we've got a triangle down here and a triangle up here. So we're going to use the cosine rule once, so we've got two sides and the angle in between them, so we can use the cosine rule to find the length of BD. And then we can use the cosine rule again, because we've got a triangle with three sides, we can use the cosine rule to work out the length of, or to work out the size of our angle, BCD. So let's do that. So let's use the cosine rule to begin with on this triangle down here to find the length of BD. So let's do that. So we've got our triangle, we're going to do A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. In terms of our A, B, and C, well, let's actually just call this side X to begin with, this BD. So here we've got our side we're trying to find, which is X. So we're going to have X squared equals B squared plus C squared. Well, that's going to be 7 squared plus 10 squared minus 2BC. Well, it's going to be 2 times 7 times 10 times by the cos of the angle. Let's just put that in a bracket. So 2 multiplied by B, which is 7, multiplied by C, which is 10, multiplied by the cos of the angle, so the cos of 130. And whenever we type this into our calculator and press equals, let's see what we get. So we get x squared equals. And whenever we work this out, we get that's equal to 238.9902654 and so on. Now that's the length of that side squared. We just want to find the length of that side. So let's square root that. So we're going to do the square root of our 238.99 and so on. And we get that x X is equal to 15.4593099. So that's the length of that side. Now we've got a triangle, our triangle BCD, and we've got the length of all three sides, so we can use the cosine rule to work out the size of this angle here. So let's call this angle Vita, and we know the length of this side now is 15.4593099. I'm not going to round that or anything, I'm going to leave it as accurately as I can. And what we're going to now do is use the cosine rule again. So we're going to write down A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. A. Okay, now let's consider our sides and our angle. So the angle we're trying to find here is Vita, and little a has to be opposite it, so our 15.459 and so on is going to be our little a, so we're going to have 15.4593099 squared is equal to b squared plus c squared, so it's going to be 5 squared plus 11 squared, so 5 squared plus 11 squared, minus 2 times b times c, so 2 times 5 times 11, multiplied by the cos of the angle, so the cos of Vita. Now we want to work out what Vita is, so let's work out some of this. So I've already got this on my calculator display from before, so I'm just going to press squared and then press equals, and we get that 238.9902654, looks familiar because it's up here, uh, is equal to, and then 5 squared plus 11 squared, so 5 squared plus 11 squared is equal to 146, subtract, and then we've got 2 times 5 times 11, so 2 times 5 5 times 11 is equal to 110 lots of cos vita, cos 
Vita. Now we've got to this point, we want to work out what our Vita is, so let's get rid of our 146 to begin with. So let's take away 146 and take away 146. So on the left hand side, we've got our 238.9902654, and we're going to take away 146, and that's equal to 92.9902654. And on our right hand side, we've got, well, we had 146, we took that away, so we're just left with minus 110 lots of cos theta. Okay. Okay, now we want to work out what our cos theta is, and so I'm going to change the sign here. I'm going to multiply everything by negative one. So if I times everything by negative one, I get minus 92.9902654 equals 110 lots of cos theta. Now I don't want this multiplied by 110, so I'm going to divide by 110 and divide by 110. On the left hand side, we would get minus 0.84536604914, and on our right hand side, we would just be left with cos theta. So we've got the cos of Vita is equal to minus 0.845 and so on. We want to find out what Vita is, so we need to do the inverse cos. So we're going to get the Vita is equal to the inverse cos of minus 0.84536 and so on. And that's on my calculator display, so I can just press shift cos answer and press equals. And we get the Vita is equal to 147.7111762 and so on. And let's just round that. Let's round it to one decimal place. That'll be 147.7 degrees. And that's it. And that's it. In today's video, we've gone through the cosine rule. So remember the cosine rule is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. It's given to you, so you don't have to learn it off by heart, but if you're doing AS maps or A-level maps, you'll find that you end up learning it off by heart anyway. Um, so that's the cosine rule. Hopefully you find this video useful. And it's one of those topics that I would say, the more practice you do in the cosine rule, the better. It's really useful for whenever you're given a triangle and you need to find the length of the third side. So if you've got those two sides and the angle in between them and you want to find the length of the third side, or in situations where you've got the lengths of all three sides of those triangles and you want to find the sides of one of the angles. But it's really useful not only to be able to just spot a cosine rule question that's like that, but also perhaps one that's in a bit of a context or situation. So that's why I'd highly recommend the practice questions today. So in the description below, I've got a link to the practice questions, and they'll give you some more questions and more practice on the cosine rule. And that's it. So I really hope you find this video useful. There's 50 days to go to GCC Maps exam. So can I just say I'm incredibly proud of you. If you've gone through and watched all those videos so far, well done. Keep up the hard work. You're already trying your very best already. Also remember things like practice papers, any extra revision sessions, and do go through making notes, flashcards, the revision cards, writing key information on your windows at home, get people to quiz you on it, studying in the library, doing some past papers and revision in the library, perhaps working together with a friend and doing some revision sessions with a friend, and, and that's all useful as well. So keep up the hard work. Just know that you're trying your very best, and that's all you can do. And if you try your very best, hopefully you get the grade that you want, or even higher. So I'll see you tomorrow for 49 days ago, seven weeks exactly tomorrow until the GCC Maths exam. I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers. Bye.